Hey guys, Ryan Hodge with FantasyLabs.com here, and I want to spend a little time showing you one of our great tools that we have called our Contest Dashboard, and it's a wonderful way to study other players' results and analyze what the pros are doing, what winning players are doing, and just see if we can identify some trends or a, really a great way to narrow down specific contest selection and see what's working in smaller field versus larger field, what the sharps are doing, and really just get a much better idea of how to become a winning player. So I have our contest dashboard brought up here. Uh, when you go to NFL right here under the menu, you go to contest dashboard, this is what you're greeted with. And you'll notice you can set uh, or choose a couple different contests from our selections here. You've got the slant in there. It's a pretty sharp 150 max. If you're studying multi-entry, you can obviously study the Millie Maker. We also have the Wildcat and the Luxury Box in there as well, which are two um, great contests to study for what I would consider most of the sharp action happening in tournaments in the DraftKings lobby in those two contests. You're going to see all the pros in there, and I'll, I'll kind of go over that here in just a second. Under the, the menu, oh, I guess to here, it's worth noting, you can select any slate. I just picked a random slate from 2020 to study. And uh, what's really cool is you're greeted with all of the, the winning players here. And you can obviously scroll down and see uh, everyone who played. And you can take a look at the field exposure, what exposure looked like for the top 1% in regards to who they played, what they did. Now, this, this is all great. Um, I don't think we learn a ton here other than just kind of identifying, okay, Julio was in the top 1%, Miami was in the top 1%. Let's take a look at the field percentage versus top 1%. You'll notice that there's definitely a little bit of chalk in here uh, out of these, you know, 370 entries. Looks like somebody, you know, the field was 6.5 on Brandon Cook. So just kind of identifying players and maybe helping you refine your player identification process and, and what you're putting or who, what players you're putting in your pool and who you're rostering. Uh, you'll also be able to go to compare exposures here. Now, what I've done is I actually have a bunch of favorited players. So if I go back to exposure under favorites, you'll notice I've got these players all favorited. I think that these are some of the best players in the world. They're obviously um, a handful of pros in here like Peter and uh, Travis, and uh, you've got Wilson, and, um, you know, Hoop2410, JK, like these are all, Ian J, all of these guys, Alex Baker, these guys all know what they're doing, and I think they're all great players to study. Um, these guys who have all been in the lobby for, you know, five, six, seven years playing at nosebleed stakes and, and make a living doing this, so I think that they're great examples. Feel free to highlight whoever you want, though. Um, so if you want to grab, you know, somebody like, uh, let's see if I can find, I think I already have mock in there. If you want to grab Peter Gibbons here, uh, you can just select his name and hit the star and that'll add them to your favorites as well. So now you'll see Peter Gibbons sitting in there uh, with the rest of them. So now that I have those guys starred, uh, if I go back to compare exposures, you'll notice it's put all of them in there. You can add and remove from here too. But I really like to study kind of what they did versus the field. Now keep in mind, some of these guys have, you know, six or seven entries. Some of them only have two or three. So that's worth noticing too. When you see like a bunch of zero percents here, maybe they only had one entry, even though they were the chalk with Miami and Gaskin, they just decided to fade it in their one entry for good leverage or something like that, right? So you can take a look at all of the exposures that they're doing. Under the team stacks, this will actually show you uh, some of the largest stacks and what percent of the lineup they made. So they make top 10, do they make top 1%. I like to sort by top 10% here or top 1% and kind of look at the field and just see, uh, you know, what's, what's really winning in this type of a contest. But we'll actually see that under game stacks. So under game stacks, if we go to top 1%, uh, we'll notice that there was a big five-man game stack, a four-man game stack. Looks like somebody snuck in with a two-man game stack. That's that's kind of crazy. Um, you'll notice another three-man here, pretty common. But in these smaller fields, you definitely see some of these larger game stacks. 
starting to to ship them so what i really like to do is under reports with the salary distribution you'll notice the wide receiver and flex position drastically change for something this small so you'll notice top one percent running back top ten percent wide receiver it's it's pretty common that that we'll see that we can even select like a different slate and do the luxury box you'll notice again running back uh top one percent so it just i encourage you to go through that slate slate by slate if we hop back into this one uh, but if we go to the Millie Maker, you'll notice these trends. And I honestly, I don't know what it is for week week 18. So maybe uh, maybe it won't work out. But look at the wide receiver position start to creep up into the top 1%. We well, don't really see that in the smaller field. So just kind of helping you identify your, your lineup construction too. And I encourage you to do this. Don't just look at one slate. Look at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, right? Go through all of them and, and take a look. Um, let's hop back into the, the Lux box here though. Uh, duplicates. This is great for studying like showdown, seeing how many lineups are being duplicated in showdown. It's kind of crazy that in 370, we still saw, uh, a, a couple different dupes here. So I like to spend time on the leaderboard though. This is where I spend time kind of identifying trends, looking at their roster construction. Um, looking at what they're doing, if they're playing just one lineup, if they're playing just, you know, three lineups versus seven or maxing it. And I also really like to take a look at the correlation here versus winnings. So you can see you have these highly correlated lineups winning a lot, a lot of money. Um, it looks like Travis snuck in with five. So yeah, no running back DST stack. That's pretty common too. He faded Miles Gaskin and got away with it. Well, you're, you'll notice like, uh, I think Gaskin was pretty heavily used in the in the top one percent here yep another gaskin dst and i i took a look at this it says zero to uh, zero to 24 and i was like what that was the jets game so i think miami was like a massive favorite against the jets and that's why you're seeing them uh you know at home using the defense and the running back this in itself, running back and DST stack is not as highly correlated as I think most people think that it is, um, which you'll see it's it's not always uh, brought in by, by some of these pro players here. So just taking a look, another no running back DST stack, no running back DST, DST stack. We're still in the top 1% here and no running back DST stack. Um, this no low owned player, We've defined that based off of kind of a millimaker low owned because uh, you'll notice like 5% and 6%. Like that's pretty low owned for a 370 man field. So I think it's sub 5% that it would have to be to be categorized as a low owned player. So just be cautious of that when you're looking through these, these entries here. But what's what I, this, this is where I like to spend a lot of time. And then if we find somebody like, looks like wakey wakey had seven entries. Um, so let's go back to wakey wakey and look at his lineup. So I just went back to exposures here under all users and I went to lineups and I'm taking a look at all of the lineups that he's playing. And so this is, this is really neat. Uh, maybe you don't play the luxury box three entries. That's some pretty low nosebleed stakes. If you ask me, maybe you play the power sweep three entries and now the field side doesn't, doesn't quite line up, but what we can do is maybe go to the wildcat. And you can start looking at some of these pros. So if I go to my favorites, let's find somebody. So Wakey Wakey played six entries in a 5,000 person field. Um, now I'm saying three, here's Drew uh, with five. Like, let's take a look at Drew. This is might be a little bit more comparable to like the power sweep, but it's not quite the same, but I think we can start taking a look at roster construction and what they're doing with their unique lineups versus their player overlap. So we can just kind of take a look and see what Drew's player overlap might have looked like when he's making, you know, minimal lineups into a into a five thousand person field. So he's making five lineups here into a five thousand person field, and we can start to take a look and see, like, yep, looks like he had a good amount of Derrick Henry, um, Miles Gaskin. Let's see how many times did he use? He was on Miami's defense and Miles Gaskin a couple different times too. So it kind of helps give you an idea. And this is a question that I get a lot is what does your core look like? 
uh, what does your player overlap look like when you're you know doing three max or playing five entries into a, into a smaller field tournament that might be like 10, 15, or even 20 max, but you're only playing three. And you can kind of take a look at what some of the, the pros are doing. So let's take a look at Ian here, who dropped 10 lineups into this. So we can take a look at his player overlap. Um, it looks like he's got Kirk Cousins once and Tannehill a couple different times. Um, how many times did he play Tannehill? One, I think I just saw two. Wow, just one. So he has almost no quarterback overlap. I don't think I saw a single quarterlap, quarterback being overlapped. But knowing Ian, I bet you he had a lot of running back overlap. So we've got Demont, Demont. There's Derrick Henry and Derrick Henry. Demont, Derrick Henry. There's Gaskin. Um, there's Gaskin. No David Montgomery on the Ryan Tannehill lineup. There's Derrick Henry again. So you, uh, Derrick Henry again. My uh, David Montgomery again. Miles Gaskin. So it looks like he's keeping his running back pool super condensed throughout these 10 lineups that he fired into the Wildcat. But it looks like he's spreading his defense around and he's really just sticking with um, kind of a core stack for his quarterback. And then keeping even, it looks like maybe even a little bit of a core of wide receivers. I see a bunch of Pittsburgh wide receivers and pass catchers throughout these, but no Big Ben anywhere, right? There's another Ebron, another Juju, another Chase Claypool. There's another Ebron. So you can start to look to see how some of these professional players are constructing multiple lineups in smaller field tournaments as far as what they're doing with the core. And look, it obviously it didn't work out for Ian here, right? Uh, he looks like he lost, he was in for three and lost two. Um, but Ian is a very, very good player. Uh, I've studied a lot of what he does and I can assure you he's a profitable player. So don't take it like just because he didn't have a good week here. Um, you know, I don't know, let's just click on another slate and see what, what Ian might've done if he played, maybe he didn't play this slate, took it off. Ian slacking, took the wildcat off. Well, you let me, oh, there he is. Here's seven lineups, lost more money. You hate to see it. Um, all right, let's just. So, but you can, once again, kind of go to lineups and see, did he follow a, a similar trend? So what I'm looking for here is a condensed running back pool, stacking his quarterback and wide receiver in every lineup with different quarterbacks, you know, kind of captaining that stack and then a similar core of wide receivers throughout them as well. Um, so I see Kamara and Henry. I don't see Kamara and Henry in any of these other ones. Maybe they were expensive and he was just able to get them there. Yeah, that's kind of strange. I think Ian, Ian tends to run from what I've studied and, and talked to him about. He tends to run very, very thin uh, or, or sorry, very condensed running backs. But look, to not get too much into a specific player, you'll notice this is just a really great tool to start studying these these winning players um, we take a look at, at jk 123 x here and and study his tendencies and what he's doing too you can see dalvin 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 so there there's three four dalvins you know he's got 20 lineups here but you can start to really pick apart what he's doing kamara 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 right so like you can really start to pick apart what these players are doing and just learn from it and study from it. So I really encourage you to hop in here. Um, it's underneath the NFL dropdown under contest dashboard and start favoriting some of your own guys. You can steal, steal from my list. I think these are all really, really great players to study. And uh, this is what honestly what I think we should be doing on early in the week on a Tuesday, Wednesday, right, is reviewing our own process, not you know, clicking some clickbait article, 
to to tell you targets or whatever. That's just it's going to show up in the projection that you're paying for from from Fantasy Labs anyways. And we'll have that kind of stuff too later on in the week when it counts after practice reports and things like that have came out. So I would highly encourage you guys to spend time studying and analyzing your not only your play, but also professional players and just seeing if there are leaks that you can plug to become a better player. It's a, a much better way to spend your time than sitting in the DraftKings lobby and, and building your dummy lineup for four hours on a Monday and a Tuesday based off of your gut feel. Um, I, would, I would recommend studying what the pros are doing and, and how you can improve and become a winning DFS player. So any questions, drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to smash that like button. YouTube algorithm loves it. And with that, run good.